Hello, welcome back to Survival Saturday with Johnny Tiger on June 4th, 2022. The other day, I was having a little conversation with a student and we started talking about uh, conditioning, whether it's conditioning your body to take more abuse or to condition your knuckles so you can bust through a concrete block. And I mentioned that yes, when I was younger, younger by meaning when I was a teenager, I was all into the how much, how hard can I punch? What can I destroy with my fist? And how much force can I take? Can I withstand? How, how, how much can I get punched? All that, uh, very simplistic. You hit me, I hit you, we see who fall down first, stuff. But now, as I develop more on my self-defense training and martial arts journey, I came to realize that, yes, you do need a certain uh, amount of conditioning. So keep in mind, I'm not talking about no conditioning. I'm not talking about that you should just throw your conditioning out the window because you do need to condition yourself. So the first time someone sucker punch you in the belly, you don't crumple and start crying, right? That's very important. And you need to condition your hand. So the first time you do end up, for some reason, punch someone on the head. Although I really recommend you don't do that because you are going to mess up your hand. But at least if you are somewhat conditioned, you won't mess up your fingers and knuckles and wrists and the whole work for the rest of the month, right? So yes, conditioning is important, but what's more important is as I always said, the strongest person, the strongest weapon on the human body, and those of you that have been following my videos know what I said about that. The strongest weapon on the human body is not your fist, it's not your elbow, it's not your knee, it's not your shin, it's not your heel, it's not your feet. It is between your ear, your brain. That is the strongest weapon. This is what allow us to be the top of the food chain. It is what makes guns and nuclear weapons and things like that possible. It's otherwise, otherwise we would be conditioning ourselves so much that we go out there and try to hunt down animals with our bare hands, okay? If, 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 that, that, is the, if that is the point, but no. Our strength is in our brain. So, following that logic, rather than trying to learn how to destroy a dump truck with my fist, it makes way more sense for me to learn how to hit in precise areas where it doesn't take that much force to get the job done. And a big part of what is going to allow you to accomplish that is memorize or at least understand the map of human weakness. This is what we call it, the map of human weakness. Now, it's a series of weak points on the human body that if you learn to target them and learn how to hit them, it gets a job done without you being able to punch through 10 blocks of ice with your fist. So today I'm going to run you guys through this uh, uh, map of human weakness the human weak points uh, that will let you get the job done easier. Now, since I don't have a partner here, I'm going to use myself and Bruce as a, and, and illustrate this as much as I can. If you guys can't see what's going on, then please tell me, right? Starting from the head, now we're going very obvious that a lot of these you already know, okay? Starting from the head, right? over the temple, okay? This is your weak point number one, and you got one on each side, 
right over the temple, right? Now, because human skull is very hard, and this weak point is very small, so to hit it, it requires a bit of fine-tuning and finesse, which means I'm not going into the fight aiming for that right away. I'm going to. I'm not going to throw a hook and hoping I knock them out or hit uh, them on the temple. Most likely, I'm going to break my hand on their head if I do that. So rather than doing something like that, I would go into the fight trying to grapple them. And once I get a hold of the head, then I bring my elbow, boom, into the temple. The first opportunity I get to get that job done. Okay? So temple. And eyes, of course. Eye gouging. We talked about that before. Nose. Doesn't matter how big the person is. If you shove their nose back, they're going back. See? No one's going to keep charging towards you if you shove their nose back into their, uh, into their own face. Top of the lip. This is a very sensitive area. If you just pinch this really, really hard and snatch it out to the side, it will uh, be a very good control point. You don't need that much strength. Although, this is very close to the mouth, so be careful going for this area. You might end up getting your finger bitten off. The front of the throat, Right in the center, okay, a lot of people say their throat, the strike, fail. It failed because you hit too low. You hit too low or too high, okay? If you hit too high, you hit just under the jaw, fear, okay? Yeah, that's uncomfortable, but it's not going to uh, determine that much. If you hit too low, again, uncomfortable, not going to determine that much. If you hit right in the center, <coughs> yeah. That hurts, right? So right here in the center of the throat. From the side, there's a good, nice little weakness point right at the angle of your jaw. So the hinge of your bottom jaw, dig your finger right in there behind the jawbone. That is a major weak point. And then, of course, the year. One of my favorite uh, weak points to use is the year. Because, again, it doesn't take that much finesse. It doesn't take that much skill or strength. If the, any moment I get, if I get a, an opening, pop, my hand right over the ear, that gets the job done. It will disorient the person, take the fight right out of them. Right? If you get a hold of the ear in a grappling situation, you can control where the head go by twisting that ear, like a car key. We talked about that before, too. Now, moving down from the head and the neck, we have, let's look at the arms first, right in the front where the, if you stick your arm out to the side and you take your hand and feel before uh, your arm right into your shoulder, there's a divot here in the front where your pec meets your deltoid. There's a divot here, okay? If you get punched really hard in this area, it will take that arm out of action for a while, right? It will mess up the mobility of the arm. This is a very good attack point, but because it's such a fine line, it's a, such a narrow channel, if you hit too far to one side, you get the deltoid. Hit too far to the other side, you get the peg. So you have to be very precise with this one. But if you learn to get your elbow right into there or knee right in there, it will get the job done really easy. Another one that I talked about before, another one of my favorite is right here in the armpit. Right here in the armpit. Okay? You hit this hard enough, it will put that arm out of commission for a while, right? So a lot of time when I go for arm drag like this, people think I'm going for a takedown. 
But no, when I go for arm drag, pop, I just hit right into the armpit. I'm not going to go for a takedown. That's too much work. Okay. Moving down the arm, a couple of tiny little weak points or pressure points. These are pressure points right on the middle of the bicep, but this requires you to actually dig under the bicep, especially if the person is uh, resisting. You don't want to push the, down on the bicep. You want to work around the inside of the bicep and dig in. And at the top of the forearm, uh, right below the elbow where this strip of muscle lead from your elbow down onto your forearm. Okay, if you hammer this hard enough, it loosens the hand. This is a very good weak point for using, for disarming a person. If you want them to drop their weapon, you hammer this right here on the top of the forearm hard enough, that will do it. And then the wrist, I'm not talking about any fancy wrist lock or stuff like that, but the wrist is a major weakness point on people, even though the wrist is usually very strong, it's usually not cushioned by a lot of muscle or stuff like that. Which means, as this is, we're going to talk about this more uh, next week when I talk about stick fighting, but this is a good place to aim for if you have your tactical band, if you have a striking blunt weapon, you, uh, if you have your keychain, or if you have a stick. Okay, always aim for the wrist because you hit it a couple of times and this start to swell up. The person can't really use our hand that much anymore. Next, doesn't matter how big the person is. The finger is one of the best uh, control and pain, pain compliance points. One of the major weak points and there's yeah, 10 of these suckers, right? You get a hold of the finger, bend it back towards the wrist, or open it up as stretch them outward as much as you can, or jam them back into the hand. There's so much you can do with the finger. It doesn't matter how big the person is, you do that to the finger, they start crying. Okay? Moving down the chest, uh, Another major weakness point that I exploit a lot is right over the nipple. Right? Don't hit someone in the chest. Hitting someone in the chest is not very good because you don't hit it hard enough. It doesn't stop the person. You hit too hard, it might kill the person. Okay, too much shock over the heart. But if you go where the nipple is and drive your knuckle in there, that gets the job done a lot faster because that is usually the weakest part of the pectoral muscle. That's usually soft tissue there. Okay, moving down, there's of course the solar plexus. This is the juncture right between your bottom of your rib cage. If you feel your body, follow your rib cage. To the middle of your stomach right before the top uh, your ab muscle start so this little divot right here okay really good attack point when you hit this point the trick is you want to drive in and up into the person okay if you just go straight in a lot of your force will get blunted by the tightening of the ab muscle. But if you hit with an upward lift, that will uh, get your force to go actually into the body. Moving further down, directly over the uh, belly button. Again, this is a hard one to hit because it's surrounded by ab muscle. But if you can uh, strike either with your thumb or elbow directly on the belly button. This will be debilitating. 
down further, of course, there's a groin. We already know about that. Moving down from the groin, the top middle of the thigh, pooh, Charlie horse, okay? This is another point where a lot of people use. This is why we throw roundhouse kicks, so we can kick them right on the top of the thigh, right here in front of the thigh, in the middle, okay? If you take your own fist and just hit yourself on top of the thigh, <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. Moving down, the inside of the knee. Okay, the knee, as a general rule, is a weak point. But the inside of the knee is the weakest. So if you ever attack someone's knee, attack the inside of the knee. Moving down, now I know a lot of people say, yeah, the shin, the shin, right? when, you, when you hit someone on the shin, it hurts a lot. Well, yes, if the person doesn't train, if the person doesn't condition, but I will say, uh, try to avoid the shin because a lot of people condition the shin, whether in kickboxing or taekwondo or stuff like that. So it's, it's a gamble when you go for the shin. If you want to go for the shin, either go for the knee or go down further. When we talk about ankle, again, you either want to go for inside the ankle or outside the ankle. Don't just go for the front of the ankle because when the person is wearing shoes and uh, when, they're, when they flex their uh, feet, the ankle, the front of the ankle is actually quite tough. Okay, so if you want to attack the ankle, inside, outside. And then, of course, the top of the foot, but that's a really difficult one because it's usually protected by shoes. Turning around, back of the body. We have the back of the knee, of course, major weak point. The kidney, just above your pelvis in the back, this soft area for most people. Okay, this is extremely extremely painful stuff right if you get punched in the kidney uh, hard enough you can actually end up peeing blood right so this is major weakness on the human body of course all the way up the center of the back the spine spinal cord major weakness that fortunately is usually protected by uh, the muscles on the side the shoulder blade on the side so it's actually quite hard to hit someone in the spine, but if you know, if you judge the right time and you hit it with your elbow or your knee, that can get the job done really, really fast. However, please, please don't do that unless it's something that is life and death because you can end up killing the person or paralyzing them. Okay, back of the neck, right here, top, top of the spine. That's a big no-no, okay? Like, the only time you want to hit someone there is you, if you don't mind killing them, is when it's the situation is so bad that you say, okay, you know, I need to save myself. Otherwise, they're going to kill me. So I have to kill them first. Uh, top of the spine, back of the neck, just a big no-no spot. This is like weak, weak point omega, and weak point alpha right there. Of these weak points, once you memorize these, also need to understand which one is more universal. Okay, so the bicep, the wrist, the top of the forearm, these are not universal weak points. These, they are weak points on a lot of people, but some people are so jacked up and uh, um, drugs or they, they, they are really buff, they have a lot of muscle mass or they're really fat, they have a lot of cushion, you're not going to be able to get these. So you got to sort of uh, uh, know who you're dealing with, right? Uh, however, armpit, spine, kidney, eyes, nose, uh, ear, throat, groin, Inside the knee, inside, outside the ankle, these and, and finger, these are universal 
weak points. Okay? These are universal weak points. They don't even require the person to feel pain. So you, even if the person is high or drunk, you break their finger, that will achieve the thing. Even if they don't feel it, it will stop them from hurting you. Right? Even if the person is high or drunk, if you stump the inside of their knee and break their knee, or if you stump the inside of their ankle and break their ankle, they can't chase you. So it doesn't require them to feel pain. Jab them in the eye. They can't see. You smack them over the ear. They can't hear. They lose their equilibrium. So it's all the same. So these are universal weak points that we have to keep in mind. Because these will work a lot more than uh, trying to jab your knuckle into someone's nipple or get your elbow into their belly button. Stuff like that. Those are, re uh, those are weak points that are uh, more incidental. That they're harder to uh, get and they, they don't work on everybody. So, there you have it. Uh, the, the map of human weakness. And I hope that you guys can put these knowledge to safe use, good use. Use them to protect yourself. Um, as Spider-Man likes to say, with great power come greater responsibility. Please do not use these to go hurt your siblings or cousins or friends or uh, just to show off how much you can hurt people. Right. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Soul Search Sunday.